Thank you, Oprah, for having me. Thank you, guys. You know, it means so much to everyone that you are here with us today, since it was only 10 days ago that your father, uh, Rocky the Soul Man Johnson, passed away. And when that happened, I thought, oh no, I, 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 I didn't think that you'd be able to be here. And you are here, so thank you for being here. Thank you. So it's been, a, it's been, has it been a challenging week? It has, it's been a challenging uh, past couple of days. My father, uh, he passed away on January 15th and we just buried him a few days ago. Tuesday. And um, yes, and uh, you know, it, um, it, as we all go through this and we all go through this, our own process of grieving and, uh, and regret and all these things and emotions that we go through. And, and um, but again, it's the cycle of life and it's, beautiful, it's painful, it's amazing, yeah. it's incredible, it's all these things. And I, I, I will tell you this, that um, in this process, I had a very complicated relationship with my dad. And it was really, there was a foundation of tough love with my father. And um, wasn't a big, I love you guy. Um, and the, as complicated as it was, what gave me um, great satisfaction at the funeral was to see, he, he, he was a great friend to so many guys, challenged father, but a great friend to so many people. So he, he went quick, there wasn't a lot of suffering, thankfully, but. Um, I, I read on, on Instagram where you'd said you wish you'd had just one more day. Do you think you got all the things said that you wanted to say? No. You did not? No, I did not. But you know, so that's the tricky thing, I think, as, as we all go through this and we all lose loved ones is, I think what I've realized in the past couple of weeks is it's good to explore these feelings on feeling a little guilty and I didn't get a chance to say the things that I wanted to say or I wish he would have said the things to me yes. as a father, now as a father of three daughters, um, the important critical things that anchor us that I didn't get from him and it's okay to explore those feelings but it's also very important to heal, to make sure that we come back to an anchoring um, foundation of, um, of gratitude. A gratitude for, the, for what I was able to have with him. Yeah. You know? And so I didn't get a chance to say the things that I wanted to say to him. Um, however, another thing that is important too is, you know, because in death, it, that's when we can spiral and think, well, I should have done this and I should have called and I should have sent more pictures. But we got to realize that um, the relationship that I had with my dad was a relationship that was, in, that was appropriate at that time. Absolutely. When did you know that he was proud of you? I felt that he was proud of me when I became successful in a industry that he had given his life to. That's so right. my father, for a lot of you guys who don't know, um, he was a professional wrestler. And so was your grandfather. And my grandfather was a professional wrestler too. And my dad, Rocky Johnson, was, a, uh, I'm half black and half Samoan. And my, oh, thank you. <laughs> All the Samoans in the house. <laughs> um, the reason why I say this, my, my dad was a, a, a black man coming up in the 60s and 70s in a world of professional wrestling, which in, all, in a lot of the companies he wrestled at was all throughout the South. So he was a trailblazer in many ways because what he was able to do as a black man was wrestle. We lived here in Atlanta when I was a kid. What he was able to do was uh, go to these small towns where it was an all-white wrestling business an all-white audience, and at that time in the late 60s where racial tension and divide was still very strong and the wounds were still there, uh, but he was able to change behavior, the audience's behavior. So this all-white audience who would never cheer a black man cheered him in these arenas. Mm -hmm. And he was actually, and he was, it's not like he was wrestling against other black men, he was wrestling against other white wrestlers. So in a trailblazing sense, he was a trailblazer, he did a lot of things that had never been done, but he also changed audience behavior, which is so hard. And the reason why I bring that up is because he was adamantly against me getting into the wrestling business. Why? Because when I said to him, 
I want to get into the pro professional wrestling business. Because it's in your blood. Because it's in my blood, yeah. and I felt like I had something to offer. But at that time, we were living in a small apartment in Tampa, Florida, and yeah. he said, look around. This is what I have. I don't have anything. And I don't have anything. And I don't want that for you. Wow. So I still had to follow my gut yeah. and my instinct. And I think years later, once I became successful as a wrestler, he was very, very proud. And then what he did, he would take, he would take credit for everything. Yeah. yeah. Of course, I taught him everything I know. <laughs> That's it. Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, I often feel that when people, someone close to you passes, you now have an angel you can call by name. And in spirit, you can feel them in ways that you couldn't in the flesh. And because there's a density to the flesh. And yes. I wonder, have you reached that yet? It's just been recent. Have you reached the point where you can feel like you have that, you know, the spirits unite. They become yes. like one. I love that you said that. I feel like the day he died, that night I went to bed and I felt, I felt so, again, grateful and moved like emotionally, like mana and energy because I realized like, oh wow, I have a new relationship with you. Yeah. In death I have a new relationship. In spirit I have a new relationship with you. Clean slate, no regrets, no pain, no anger, no complication, just me and you. Ah, I love that. And you just mentioned Mana. I saw on your Insta where you were talking about thanking all, the, um, all your fans for the Mana. What is Mana? Okay, so Mana in Polynesian culture, we have a word called Mana. And Mana uh, is a powerful word. It means spirit, power. And um, so, for example, an example of Mana is when we walk out and we walk on stage the mana in this room is so palpable. Oh, y'all got good mana. We got good mana here. <laughs> and that's what it is. It's very powerful. It's a very powerful thing. So your father was very strict. Now, here's the thing. You've gone one-on-one -on -one with uh, some fierce competitors in the ring, right? Uh, but now you're in one of the scariest situations any man can be in, raising three daughters. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Extremely scary. And are, are, are you a strict dad? Um, I, <laughs> I am I, I'm not super strict, but discipline is important. Yeah. And, but also, you know, my, I'll go back to my dad. My dad loved me with the small capacity in which he was capable of. Mm -hmm. So I learned from that. And so with my daughters, I want to be as full and as present with the love that I give them. Present, so, yes. Yes. That's what and, we've been talking about. What do you want to make sure that they get that you didn't get. And it's so interesting when you have children, I've seen this from a lot of people, who you didn't get what you needed. You just didn't get what you needed because of what The Rock just said. Y your parents didn't have the capacity to give it to you. And now that you're older, you have to learn to give that to yourself and to be able to give that to your children in a way that you don't carry on what was done to you. So what is it you want your daughters to know about the way you love them? I want my daughters to know that I love them unconditionally, truly unconditionally, without condition. And I have a daughter who's 18 years old. Her name is Simone Jasmine, who just turned four. Tiana. Baby Tiana, thank you, who is getting ready to turn two. And I, I am, as I told my 18-year-old daughter, Simone, I said, I love you. I'm going to tell you I love you every day. I'm going to text you so I love you. So you. you're one of those say the words out loud. I, uh, yes, because yeah. I didn't get that. And yeah. I, I'm, I, I will look at you. I love you. And I'm going to text you. But I also told her, I'm unattached. You don't even have to text me back. Right? You could text me back. It's fine. But you don't have to. Like, it's okay. It's without condition. It's, it's unconditional love. And I also want to teach my daughters the value of hard work. More importantly, I want to teach my daughters the value of being kind and how important that is. Mm. Well, you know, I, I, I read that your father, you used to watch him in training and he would say, if I'm going to get up at 6 a.m., you're going to get up at 6 a.m. So what do you think you got the most from him? Was it your work ethic? What was it? It was definitely my work ethic. My dad was a man who, who um, against the odds, made it. And, um, but he would get up at usually 5, 5.30 in the morning, and he would say, if I get up, you're going to get up too. 
He would drag me to the gym. And, and by the way, I'm five years old, and he would drag me to the gym. Yes. <laughs> And I, would just, I wouldn't work out, but he would just make sure that I was there and be with him. And that was our time that we could spend together. And, um, but I would say my work ethic from my dad. My dad always said, too, that <clears throat> regardless of what you do in life and where you go, respect is going to be given when it's earned, and you have to go out and earn it every single day. Yeah. So your dad taught you a lot. I wonder what have your daughters taught you? My daughters taught me how to be... I think more caring and more sensitive and more um, selfless. Yeah. Were you there for all of them when they were born? Uh, I was right there. Right there. I mean, right there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you were right there. I was right there. Yes. And bring it on. I mean, this is our moment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And is that a life changing moment when that happens for you? It's the greatest thing that I have ever experienced in my life. And it gave me such a profound respect for um, uh, my baby's mamas. <laughs> I, have, I have two. I, I was once married, and now I'm happily married. Lauren is back there. We've known each other for 13 years now. But I have, um, it is, has been the most profound experience of my life. Because also, too, you know, when you, you meet so, as a man, you meet someone, you meet a woman, and this is going to be the one, and you want to get married, and my first marriage didn't work out. But then the birth of a child and what that does and the, the, the lens perspective that just shifts, and it just gives me a new profound respect for, again, their moms. As so it didn't work out with the marriage, but then she became your business partner, your first marriage. She did, yes, yeah. yes. And you still are. We still are. So my, my first, uh, my ex-wife, uh, Danny, we, um, the marriage didn't work out. And it was just one of those things where it wasn't an ugly divorce. It was just marriage wasn't in our cards. We're great friends. Marriage wasn't in our cards. But we, had, but we both had an appetite for business and to accomplish things. And um, we thought, well, what if we continued to do business together and um, do you think we can? And it felt like it was uh, like we could make something happen, and we did. So we had. Um, it we... doesn't have to be ugly. No, it doesn't have no, to be ugly. No, it doesn't have to be ugly. You proved that. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. if you could kind of remember, as I tell my friends, my friends who are, do go through divorce, if you could remember what it was years ago. Yeah. And what that feeling. What is the was... reason why you got in, in, yes. in, in entangled in the first place. So tell me this. I know you didn't grow up with a lot of money, and I read the story about when, uh, I think you were around 15, and there was an eviction notice on the door, and how that was made a big impression on you, right? It did. Now, <clears throat> yes. Now, you're one of the highest paid actors in the world. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I do all right, thank you. You do all right. And... Does, does that title, the sexiest man alive, the highest paid in the da da da, all the, do all of those, do the, what do those titles mean, if anything? You're the greatest, you're the most popular, you're the most followed, you're the most, you're the most, the most, the most, the most. <laughs> <laughs> it's great for the ego. It's wonderful. Kidding. Yeah. The better question is, how do you keep your ego in check when all of that is happening ah, around sure. you? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Very important. Um, people I have around me and how important that is. Do you have anybody who can tell you the truth at this point? Yeah, she's called my wife, yes. Okay, okay. Absolutely. Lauren can tell you the yeah, truth. Yeah, Lauren can tell me the truth, but by the way, and this is where it's the tricky thing for us too, being in this yeah. position, is we want to make sure that we have people around us who are inspired to do well and reach for and continue to share our vision, but also at times say, well, I'm not quite too sure if that's the right thing to do. So I, look, I've had a wonderful career, especially coming from being evicted, um, and those titles are nice and everything is fine, but I, honestly, I, you know, the, I, I'm so grateful to be in the position of men, um, and I never take anything for granted. I try not Aren't to. Aren't you glad that you were once evicted? Because it gives you such an appreciation for what you have now. It just gives such perspective. When yeah. we were 14 years old, we lived in Hawaii, and we lived in a small efficiency apartment. And we were, my mom and I came home, and I'll never forget, the rent was $180 a week. And there was an a eviction. Week? A week. And there was an eviction notice on the, um, on the door. And it was, this was the one, it was the final <laughs> eviction notice. Like, that's the one. 
my mom started crying and I never forgot in that moment. It was a seminal moment for me because I felt like I never want to be in this position again. What can I do? So at 14 years old, I thought, well, the heroes in my life, Muhammad Ali, for example, professional wrestlers, um, they're all men who have worked hard with their hands and they built their body. Ah, yes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what my dad taught me and these other heroes. I'm going to go build my body so we're never evicted again. But being evicted, by the way, has, as you were saying, has not only given me just great perspective, but also great gratitude, but also, and my team and my family, we laugh at it. But I feel this way, like, oh, well, you know, we're, we're a month away from being evicted. I got to go to work. Like, I still have that in my head. You still head. have that. I still have that in my head, you know, where it, but it, it keeps you grounded, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, because... I, I, that's why the, the most this and the most that, again, it's wonderful, but the alternative is what I once was. And it also doesn't change the way you're wired, because I still save toast. I do. I will save toast rather than throw it away. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I know, I, I know I, there's going to be more toast, but I still do because it, there's something in me, because when we were growing up, we had to save it. You know, yes. you weren't allowed to, like, throw food away. So there was a really big deal. So here's the deal. You have now the, you get the biggest paychecks. You have all this money, acclaim, fame. You didn't have that growing up. How do you raise children who have good sense and are also kind when they have everything? Because part of what made you who you are is having had that eviction notice mm -hmm. and having not had everything. So how do you do that? With, how are you planning to do that with your children? So, for example, with our 18-year-old daughter, it was really important that we share those stories, share the stories about being evicted. Um, her mom's parents were, um, were immigrants who came over from Cuba. Uh, it's important that we've always shared those stories. And also, we live, we try and keep it as simple as we possibly can. Uh, I live, we have a farm in Virginia. Uh, happily to say that we, I've moved my family here to Atlanta. So, <laughs> place 30, 45 minutes away where it's very quiet, um, but also uh, just making sure that we continue to instill in the babies and the kids the value of a dollar and what it means and the value of food and always saying uh, how grateful we are and the things that we're grateful for, especially at that young age. Uh -huh. So we know you're rel relentless about your workouts. You even travel with your own, I heard you have your own. 40,000 pound mobile gym. <laughs> yes. You travel with your gym? Yes. Oh, but let me give everybody context as to why I travel with a gym. It's just, it's very, it's, it's hard. <laughs> there we wow. go. Wow. Wow. Well. The, you call this your anchor and where you actually, you find solitude. I do, yes. So the the gym for me and this physical activity for me is my anchor and i always you know i would recommend that for all of you guys in the room is for us to find that anchor whether it's hiking or biking or yoga or meditation or whatever it is because for me the gym or just some sort of physical activity it anchors my day and then it allows me to go on and work uh for the rest of the day so it is so. It, it is a spiritual practice for you well, it's, it's way more than just physicality yes. it's way more than just picking up a weight it's just it is uh, my balance, it's my anchor, it's my spiritual anchor, mental, because what it allows me to do, it's the only time for me that, and we all need this, because this treadmill of life, there's no stop button, so it's so crazy. Um, it just allows me to block out the noise and clear my head, think about what I need to do or accomplish, or think about the things I need to accomplish without the influx of information and people trying to tug at me and pull Absolutely. at me. Absolutely. Well, we thank you for being here today to share it. It's perfect.